Hey folks, with Shadowlands coming out just around the corner, I thought it would be a good time to sum up why I'm looking forward to the expansion as well as what I have planned. So let's get started. So first up, I'm not really a negative person. I always like to look for the best of things and I can get pretty enthusiastic. Previously I may have bought the Collector's Edition with hype, but uh, well both times I did that I stopped playing so I don't do that anymore. It does mean however that I'm not really going to be talking about stuff that I'm not a big fan of because generally I'm a pretty big fan of most things. Now then, to understand why I liked what I like, let's talk about what I'll be doing. I'll be raiding normal then heroic, we don't touch mythic, I'll be pushing for mythic plus keystones, might step foot into the arena at a pretty low skill level mind you, and will certainly be trying to push the solo content and challenges as far as they can go. And some roleplay, getting back into that now. So with that all done, first up, it's the options. I know some players may feel restrictive, but I am in a group that doesn't care about what covenant you pick, though, so I'm just lucky that I get to pick the Night Fae. Happens to be the best for what I want to do, and happens to be my favourite covenant. But even so, I don't feel pressured, I am taking what I want. And the Fae do everything for me. I love my myths, I love everything about the style of fairy tales, and of course I love the druidic themes. I love the ability, I love the fact it's the best for damage and flexibility, I like how good it feels and yet how simple it is. I love the soulbinds, I like the choice that there is, some are better for different roles. Since I'm only planning on playing Resto with a maybe a bit of Guardian on the side if the group needs it, I don't need to worry about assigning some to each spec. I can have Nia for DPS and solo stuff, I can have Dreamweaver for more healing and intensive fights, and then Karain for soloing tougher content or tanking. Fae also have in my opinion the best quests in the game ever. I like a lot of the stories in Shadowlands, I think the main storyline is the best they've done, the Kyrian campaign is great, Revan Dress Zone is fantastic, and most of the characters are engaging to me. I personally like it when Blizzard decide to venture into new lore, and really have an emphasis on exploration, which I think this expansion is doing. Speaking of all this choice, it's the same with the legendaries. I think Blizzard did a good job with the Druid Neutral Legendaries and how they're mailed in all the forms in a way that isn't different for each spec. I am not in a situation where I have to pick the best conduit or whatever for each fight, so I can respec and such as much or as little as I feel. It's hard for me to say anything about raids or dungeons, I haven't touched them yet, but since I haven't, they are going to be fresh. Looking through tactics, planning out gear drops, and eagerly looking on base mythic for potential skips is a feeling that you can't get outside a new expansion. And then we have Torghast, which is great fun for someone like me who loves playing as a healer, solo content like this, it is great. And currently you are watching one of the toughest solo challenges I've done on in the video, that is a layer 8 of Torghast with very bad gear. Secondly, Rest of Druid is still good. I really enjoy Rested Druid, it's not changed enough to ruin it. Really speaking, I think most of the changes are fairly good, it's you know a bit disappointing with some of the damage nerfs, but on the whole I think Druid are trying to push a more flexible and for this Heart of the Wild is great, even though I do tend to forget to use it quite a few times. But I'm sure my group will remind me. Which speaking of, groups. I enjoyed BFA, and one of those reasons, very simple, are the group of friends. I have a fun Mythic Plus group, I have an enjoyable and memorable raiding team that puts up with me, and an awesome roleplaying guild that thanks to a recent server merge, well, roleplay has never been stronger on our server. Every time I stopped playing WoW, roleplay got me back into it. I love user generated content, and that is what roleplay is, having people to play with can turn a bad expansion into a great one. It's amazing how many complaints about an expansion can become non-existent with friends by your side. I know I will enjoy Shadowlands because my friends are playing it alongside me. As for other stuff, challenges. I like challenges and hopefully have a few good ones lined up. With the Torghast delays, I am working towards the Speckless Druid. My aim is not only to get her up to level 60, but have her complete an entire Torghast run. Is that mad? Maybe, we'll see. I want to keep doing challenge videos, even starting to formulate a plan for mythic runs with 5 druids each able to perform only the role of their affinity, not their actual spec. That one might take a bit of work though. As for the rest of the game, I think the more and world quests are just… there. They aren't going to be bad and I'll do them, but it's hard to be excited about them. I do think however there will be less time needed to get up to scratch, what with the Torghast change to its dating, which means I can spend more time on alts earlier on. Speaking of plans, Let's talk about the channel. 
starting off with a huge thank to the currently 95 subscribers. I know it's a simple button press, but it does mean the world to me that there are that many people out there who want to hear what I have to say. I am looking forward to a new chapter of WoW but with a different perspective because I have this channel now. I know my mic and editing aren't always top notch, something that I probably shouldn't advertise, but I like to think that I go into deep detail on the subjects I do cover, as niche as they are, and obviously I intend to keep that up and cover practically everything on the subject that I choose to talk about. To that end, I will of course be making videos on cat weaving again and owl weaving. I'll also try and cover each in each covenant. I also intend to make the Torgas guide again. My original plan was to livestream my levelling, but I work in an online toy shop, and with Christmas and lockdowns I am way too busy, so I don't think that will happen, nor will a fluttery of videos at the start I'm afraid. I do want to try and hit cap as soon as possible, so I want to see how quickly I can do that. I'm not a speedrunner, but I like the theories behind it, and I always try and be efficient. Still, I believe the delay was a good idea, even if it hit me personally. The difference from then to now, it has to be one of the best decisions ever made. And it's given me more time to research as well, so my guides on all things, from gameplay to conduits, can be precise as possible when I get round to them, which should be up soon after stuff sort of settles at the start. However, in the new year, I want to work on heroic boss guides. I know there will be a lot of guides out there, but I feel that for many groups, and there are many many groups that just do heroic as their main progression, most videos are quite quick and don't go too much into depth. I've often found I've had to look elsewhere for precise tactics and timings for the bosses that we're really trying to progress on. On top of that, Mythic Plus videos will be back, and I also want to do more regular challenges, not just levelling, though I do want to try a starting gear only run as well for Druid, but also take some of those challenges to endgame and do some boss soloing as resto as well. No idea how well that will work, but I have faith I want to maintain at least two videos a week in the new year. Which hopefully will be about the time I'll get a new microphone and a new chair, one that won't squeak. I also want to start streaming on YouTube but I've had some issues when I tried before, so it's still just Twitch for now. One thought I did want to look at in videos is deconstructing boss design. Just like speedrunning, the theories behind boss design has always interested me. I've enjoyed designing bosses in my head for Warcraft, and as well as guides for each boss, I'd like to make videos talking about why certain bosses are how they are, why mechanics might be there, and generally the evolution of boss fights. There should be something nice for between tiers. So while I am expecting a busy time at the start of Shadowlands, I know that I am going to enjoy the time I get to play. Resto Druid hasn't changed enough for me to not stay in love with it. All my friends are still playing, and now I have a bunch of great people who are interested in hearing me talk about the game that I love. A game which currently is planned to have a lot of features I think I will enjoy. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the other side of the veil.